Have you ever started a series and been hopeful that it'll turn out good by the end? Obviously the answer to that question would be yes, but let's expand further on that. Let's say that you're going through a series for the first time. It has a great start that hooks you, so you continue on and enjoy it even more. What would you say if this great series slowly started getting worse? You begin to notice slight changes that make it feel off. Would you keep going and hope for the best? Let's say you do, but it only continues on its downward slope. Do you decide to hang on until the finale? Let's say you finish the series to its conclusion, only to find an ending that dashes your hopes and leaves you unsatisfied. How could this happen when the beginning was so strong? Were the changes really that drastic? Now let's say that you watched a wholesome anime about a guy raising a daughter for the first time. Would you ever expect this to go wrong? Welcome to Soggy Drop. Usagi Drop, or Bunny Drop if you prefer, is a very relaxed series in the slice of life vein. The major themes focus on what it means to take care of someone, what it means to grow up, and what family really is. It's full of great characters, has lots of interesting moments, and has a good sense of pacing. The art is also nice to look at regardless of what version of the story you decide to indulge in. Usagi Drop has both a manga and anime adaptation though the anime only spans 11 episodes and covers roughly 24 manga chapters out of the available 62. I'm glad to say the anime is very faithful to the original books, a few small things aside. But exactly what kind of story are we dealing with here? The story kicks off with our main protagonist, Daikichi, arriving at his parents' house for a funeral gathering. As he gets ready to see his grandfather off one last time, a young girl outside grabs his attention. Before he has a chance to say anything, she runs off, leaving him to wonder who she was. As it turns out, the adults that have come to this gathering have something else to discuss. The new topic is the young girl that Daikichi encountered earlier, named Rin. It's found out that she's the illegitimate child of the late grandfather, and she currently has nowhere to go. Daikichi listens to all the adults list off excuse after excuse as to why they can't take her in. This makes him progressively more annoyed, to the point where he gets up and tells them off. He asks Rin if she'd like to come back with him to live at his place, and she decides to take him up on the offer. From this point, Daikichi learns a lot about the situation he's just landed himself in. Taking care of a child is an incredibly large responsibility, and as more and more things pile up, he begins to understand this well. It all starts with finding an appropriate daycare but then Daikichi has to begin accommodating his working hours in order to drop off and pick Rin up on time. He has to prep her meals, go supply shopping, do chores, and take care of anything else that comes with raising a kid. He also starts to give up certain things, like smoking or going out for late night drinks after work. Daikichi doesn't seem to mind too much, however, because he genuinely wants to take care of Rin given her circumstances. He starts to come to the conclusion that taking care of this girl doesn't feel like a sacrifice. The extra company living with him begins to show Daikichi a new perspective on life. Rin is a young six-year-old girl when Daikichi first brings her home with him. After her initial shyness wears off, it's discovered that Rin is actually quite sociable and friendly. Not only that, but she's also very smart and responsible, much to the surprise of Daikichi. Unfortunately, Rin also occasionally has a hard time at night due to previous events, and she also worries about complicated things. Thanks to Daikichi's efforts, however, she's able to find comfort and stability with her new guardian. As events progress, Rin gets closer to Daikichi's family, and also makes lots of different friends. She continues to be a bright influence on the people around her, and her warm smile makes it clear that things are doing just fine. As we get a little further into the story, additional important characters get introduced. Koki is a young boy that Rin becomes friends with during her time at daycare. He's always full of energy and usually getting into trouble of some kind. Possibly due to her firm yet friendly personality, Rin is able to keep him in check, and the two become close friends in no time. He even makes it a routine to come to Rin's home in the early mornings to share breakfast and walk to school together. Koki not only gets close with her, but also gets attached to Daikichi as well. As Koki lives at home with his divorced single mother, he hasn't really had a father figure in his life. 
Daikichi's personality clicks pretty well with him, and Koki ends up spending lots of time at his place as a result. Between scoldings, having fun, or even more serious moments, these two form a close bond. Koki's mother, known as Natani-san, is right there with Koki in a variety of situations. Trying to keep up with her son often leaves her worn out, but deep down, she's a very strong person. She becomes a big source of help soon after Daikichi takes Rin in, and without her, he definitely would have stumbled a lot more in the beginning stages. Even later on, she's a pillar of support for the new family. Daikichi spends a decent amount of time around Itani-san, as their kids hang out quite often and also go to the same school. Daikichi becomes attracted to her almost immediately, and as he gets to know her more, he admires just how much she's able to do on her own. There's potential for love in the future, and with the way the days progress, things are looking positive on that front. Following Daikichi through the days eventually leads us to an encounter with the final important character of the series, Masako. She's a manga artist that is usually a bit aloof, and when she talks to others, it tends to come off as being rude or insensitive. It's very clear that she isn't great at interacting with others. She does have a slightly gentler side, but it's only reserved for people that really get to know her. Now, you may notice that she bears a bit of a resemblance to someone, and the person in question just so happens to be Rin. It's discovered at the start of the series that Rin's mother abandoned her and basically went missing, as there was no means of contact. After Daikichi does a little detective work, he discovers Masako's phone number and meets with her to talk about the very important issue of her daughter. Some discussion goes on, and we find out that Masako is encouraged to have her child by Daikichi's grandfather, despite her own wishes to give up on the idea. She made the decision to leave in order to fully pursue her work, and when asked if she cares about Rin in any capacity, her answer comes out very conflicted. Daikichi is understandably annoyed at how this person could be so irresponsible, but decides to keep her in the loop for the sake of at least informing her about Rin. Masako has a few other small encounters with Daikichi, including the invitation to see Rin from a distance. After this event, she buries herself in work, and that's the last we see of her for a while. The series continues on with its very lighthearted journey, and the anime comes to a close with Rin still enjoying her time as a kid. Things are capped off perfectly here, and a lot of people understandably wanted another season. Honestly, that would be great, if the series continued in the same direction. The thing is, a lot of changes come into play, and they're a lot more serious in nature. Picking up at chapter 25, the series skips ahead a full 10 years. Daikichi is now in the vicinity of 40, and Rin is 16 and going to high school. Koki is also the same age now, and still coming over early for breakfast. Things have continued to stay the same over the years. Some of the best moments in this new arc come in the form of watching Daikichi and Koki interact. They behave in a very similar fashion, and it's extremely easy to tell how close they are. It's very clear how important of a father figure Daikichi is to Koki, and it's always fun seeing them together. Rin is still as responsible and studious as ever, and now handles various chores around the house. Seeing the two teens side by side just so happens to remind me of another anime couple, but I digress. Regardless of the time that's passed, everything is still wholesome, is what I'd like to say. Unfortunately, some events have taken place during these 10 years that tipped this series from a slice of life into a drama. Immediately after the time skip, the focus shifts from Daikichi as the main character over to Rin. We follow her very closely as she lives her life in the shoes of an average high school student. She takes her studies very seriously and is on friendly terms with just about everyone. With her focus and interests elsewhere, she has no desire for a relationship of any kind. She fully intends to stay out of trouble if she can, and for the most part, she does. There is, however, one person that introduces a decent amount of trouble into her life. That person is Koki. In the present, Koki is in love with Rin, but she only sees him as more of a sibling. Then again, there actually was a time that Rin felt similarly, back in her middle school days. This budding love was snuffed early, however, after Koki got involved with a different girl. It didn't help things that this girl blackmailed Koki into staying with her, and also spammed Rin's phone with various unwelcome texts. They eventually started talking again, but the menacing aura of this possessive girlfriend kept the two friends away for quite some time. So, 
That got needlessly serious. Honestly, I'm not quite sure why this is present in the series at all. If you took it out, you'd still find the teens in the exact same situation we see at the beginning. Koki's advances continue on through the chapters regardless, so there could have been more gradual romance developments to fill in the gaps. It probably would have felt more natural than making things pointlessly complicated with characters that don't add anything to the overall narrative. I guess depending on your taste, an addition like this could work, but it's just the wrong kind of series for something like this. While these happenings are going on between the teens, Daikichi and Natani-san have been meeting up behind the scenes. The two enjoy talking with each other, and Daikichi has come to realize that through these conversations, his general feelings of attraction have evolved into love. He really admires Natani-san, and eventually works up the courage to ask her about getting together as a couple. She solemnly declines the idea for a few personal reasons. With Koki having acted the way he did during his middle school years, she wasn't sure that Rin would be alright with the idea of becoming a family together. Natani-san also constantly has her hands full taking care of Koki in a variety of ways, and feels that it's best if she's the sole person to take responsibility for her son. She finishes her statement by saying she wished she'd married someone like Daikichi during her younger years, but it's already too late. Daikichi brings up the possibility one more time a few years later, but Natani-san politely declines again, adding that someone else is interested in dating her. Daikichi is understanding about the situation, but he doesn't know that she's lying to him. Natani-san decided to tell this lie in order for them to both move on with their lives, but still remain as friends. In her mind, she truly wishes that it could have worked out, and thinks maybe she wasn't meant to live with someone else. This group of scenes between the two adults actually feels incredibly profound to me. Natani-san isn't just denying Daikichi's feelings for no reason. Despite wanting to accept his invitation, she's fully weighed all the options, and she's determined for herself what the best course of action is. It's a very sad side story, but the reasoning feels genuine, and it becomes that much more impactful as a result. Given the history these two characters have, these scenes don't feel out of place at all, and I'm glad they're present here. I just wish this part was a little more fleshed out. So after these events take place, we start approaching the finale of the series, and this is where the biggest problem rears its ugly head. Rin starts to get curious about her mom from all those years back, and with Koki's input, decides to submit a family registry request to get some information. Rin doesn't want Daikichi to know, because if he finds out, he might start to worry about various things. Daikichi ends up intercepting the letter later on, but he's actually perfectly willing to let Rin see her mom. He states the possibility of Rin being hurt from this meeting, and wants her to be fully prepared before committing to the idea. While Daikichi still hates Masako for abandoning Rin, he's grateful that he could meet Rin due to this decision and wants to help her however he can. So, Daikichi gives Masako a call asking if Rin can come to visit her after all this time. Incredibly, she's not really into the idea at all, but after Daikichi rightfully chews her out, she reluctantly gives in. After Rin arrives, she's met with a pregnant Masako and her new husband, which we see briefly before this encounter. Despite how bad the situation should feel, Rin is surprisingly open to Masako's new child on the way. The two discuss some things and reconcile a little bit before the short encounter ends. While I personally don't think the friendliness is deserved, I can at least appreciate Rin being the bigger person here. It's around this time that a certain other thing starts happening. Rin actually starts developing feelings for someone. Who, exactly? <sighs> it really pains me to say, but the person in question is Daikichi. Yeah, let me explain this one. Having grown up together over the years, Rin has always had a close bond with Daikichi. She initially doesn't have any romantic thoughts whatsoever, but after talking with various people about certain topics, she starts to question herself in regards to her feelings. Prior to meeting with Masako, Rin thinks about how she would feel if another woman got together with Daikichi. This is followed by thoughts on how many levels of separation are between them, and things start to snowball from there. At one point, Koki puts it together that Rin feels this way, and is noticeably shocked as a result. He decides to discuss this with Daikichi soon after, and rather than object, oddly suggests dating? Even Daikichi, who initially starts with the right rationalization, states that marriage would be impossible due to the levels of separation, which means he at least considered the possibility, though this panel potentially shows them both realizing how dumb their statements are. Rin overhears this conversation and runs away. 
The guys eventually track her down, but from this point, the sense of normalcy is gone. Rin is now fixated on her feelings for Daikichi, and entertains the thought of never getting married due to her being rejected and seen as the same kid. Back at home, she confesses that certain boundaries are starting to get skewed, and both sides of these feelings are important to her. Daikichi properly rejects her this time, stating that her saying that is a very cruel thing to do. He springs the ever-important fact that he raised Rin as a daughter for 10 years, and this conversation wasn't anything he'd want to hear. Rin runs off again, and Daikichi starts to realize something. If this is the direction things are going, their life together might break down completely. Soon after this happens, Daikichi discovers a note that Rin left for him, saying she's going to her mom's place for a while. After reading this, he decides to go after her. The focus shifts over to Masako's place, where Rin decides to openly talk about the issues she's having. Masako makes a very bold statement, telling Rin to live how she wants, and also reveals that the grandpa from her childhood is in fact not her real father. Daikichi and Rin discuss these things on the train home, and Rin's feelings come out in full force now. Daikichi breaks down and decides to accept her feelings, but wants to wait two years until she graduates. Daikichi briefly tells Koki a little later about the new development, and he accepts the news in stride. Time then skips ahead again to the fateful two years later moment. The two of them discuss marriage, and at the very end of the chapter, Rin says this. This is the line that killed everything for me, and it actually made me a bit sick seeing where this series ended up. It really seems like all the development got thrown out in favor of a personal fantasy. This last group of chapters feels wrong in a lot of ways, and I want to properly break this down. Even if the two characters weren't related, in the end, Rin was still raised as Daikichi's daughter. This odd romance angle wasn't a factor until the very end of the series, where it got quickly and forcibly escalated. All of the characters that were aware of this very readily accepted the circumstances. Daikichi himself showed distaste towards the romance, but also didn't put up much resistance after some brief dialogue. Not only that, but after saying he wanted to wait those two years for the graduation, he later casually states that it's impossible to refuse Rin anyways. Him saying this means that he basically accepted the situation back when she was 16, and his offer to possibly find someone else was just lip service. He also continues to call her his daughter, even after the two have gotten together and that comes off as especially weird to me. And yes, I'm aware that the legal age for a woman to get married in Japan is 16, but that's a different point entirely. All of that aside, I still think the biggest issue here is Masako. Her entire existence in this series is an irresponsible person that valued work over everything else, and still decided to have a child despite that. She pushed her first child away, and then while sticking to that work, later decides to have another child and forget completely about Rin. She finally spends a bit of time with her first daughter, and a few moments of reconciliation are conveniently written in to make her seem like a slightly decent person. But the real clencher is when Rin visits her for the final time. Instead of giving actual advice to a confused teen with conflicting feelings, Masako does the complete opposite and tells her to do whatever she wants. Also, who was Rin's real father? Oh, I don't know, never gets mentioned for the sake of plot convenience, so whatever I guess. Masako in my eyes is a completely worthless character, and the overall writing of this final section is abysmal. Now for the sake of argument, I'd like to present a slightly different scenario for how I would change the story. Here are the major characters that we see throughout the series. Firstly, remove Masako completely. It would be perfectly acceptable if Rin's mother was an anonymous figure in the story. Rin moves in with Daikichi, they have the same wholesome moments together, and there's no mention of the mother character ever again. It doesn't add anything in any regard, so just leave it out. This leaves us with the main cast of four. Daikichi, Rin, Nitani-san, and Koki. The childhood parts can stay the same but remove some of the out-of-place elements from the teen years, like the blackmailing girlfriend. Focus more on the budding feelings between Rin and Koki. They were already childhood friends, so it would make sense for them to gradually work up to potential romance. The uncertainty could make for interesting dramatic and comedic moments, but it would still keep more of the light-hearted nature from the first half of the series. 
In the background, Daikichi and Natani-san would also slowly be getting closer to each other. With this setup, the story could go in two different directions. The first outcome could be Rin and Koki getting together after the long process of really getting to know each other, and the two parents would be happy for them, remaining apart. This could also work because most people that know Rin and Koki already think they've been a couple. The second outcome could have the two parents getting together instead. Rin already mentioned Koki feeling like a sibling to her, and Koki even expresses how he'd like Daikichi to be with his mom. The two adults could finally acknowledge their feelings for each other, and the series would conclude with a happy family. There could also be the inclusion of love rivals for both couples, adding a little extra suspense, but all of these elements would depend on the effectiveness of the writing. It's a slightly more vanilla approach to the story, but you have to keep in mind just what this series is. While also being slice of life, Usagi Drop also falls under the Jose genre. Jose manga usually portray situations of realistic romance, and are catered to older teen or adult women. That said, I feel like my previous scenarios are more in line with realistic romance than raising a daughter and suddenly becoming romantically involved. It may be a lot more traditional, but I feel like anything is better than the ending we got. If you wanted something with a bit more conflict, you could use the same romance elements, but have both couples being in love result in complications. It could even get to the point where they all see each other as competition. This could be dramatic or comedic, or even both, depending on how you presented it. There's another completely different scenario that doesn't focus on romance at all, but instead on rebuilding a lost connection. This would be the only situation that involves Masako, because a major plot point would be her guilt. Instead of being completely uninvolved in Rin's life, the decision to leave her would be haunting, and Masako would spend her nights with regret. At the point where she gets the call from Daikichi, she could still act the same way, but new feelings would begin to surface. Her daughter is getting older, and she wants to actually be present for that. The story could realistically have her attempting to do things with Rin, while also balancing a busy work schedule. They would slowly but surely get closer, because the effort would be there. Rin could learn about the complicated situations of adults, and Masako could learn that she actually has a pretty cool kid. Even Daikichi could warm up to Masako, and be more comfortable with her being in Rin's life. There would be conflict, but also growth between all the characters. It would be organic. Regardless of whether you prefer romance or drama for these characters, all the ideas I've presented have an overall theme of togetherness. If written well, a series about gradually becoming a new family could have some incredible moments that fall under both genres. Maybe in another universe, things turned out differently. At any rate, that covers the full scope of Usagi Drop. A lot of the beginning chapters are really well done, and even some of the middle chapters are quite good too. It's just a shame that the series ended the way it did. There's an interview in the final volume of the manga with artist and author Yumi Unita. Apparently, the ending of this story was something that she had planned from the very beginning. She thought about it constantly and still arrived at this conclusion. And I don't know how that makes me feel. Regardless, in the end, she wrote the story she wanted to. And while I don't agree with a lot, I wouldn't want to restrict any artist in their vision. I can still express regret in what could have been different and more fulfilling on a personal level. I don't wish to condemn this artist. Apparently, she's published a lot of different works, and this one was certainly interesting, so I might give another series from her a shot in the future. The only thing I can recommend from this point is to only watch the anime. Without the context of future events, it's still a perfectly enjoyable experience, and most fans consider the ending of the anime to be canon anyways. I do really love what this series initially was, but the terrible ending ultimately taints what it could have been. Hey there. If you're here at the end of the video, thanks a lot for watching. If you're curious about the full range of series events, the manga is openly available to read at your discretion. Just be aware of what you're getting yourself into. Then again, I suppose if you watch this, you already fully know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my little analysis. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Peace, peace, guys.